you don't want to start stressing about it, creating this meta stress about sleep. And there's no evidence that eight is better than six, that you could very well do better on six than on eight. Your entire life, waking or asleep, is broken up into these 90 minute ultradian cycles. Ending your sleep after a 90 minute cycle, at the, at the, near the end of a 90 minute cycle, say at the end of six hours, in many cases is better for you than sleeping an additional hour, seven hours, and waking up in the middle of an ultradian cycle. And if you wake up in the middle of an ultradian cycle, sometimes, not always, you can be very groggy for a long period of time. I certainly do better on six hours than I do on seven. There are a few other things that um, turn out to be strong parameters for success in this domain. Your sleep and your wakefulness are the product of kind of the average of a number of different behaviors. Positive anticipation about the next day events actually is a powerful metric for creating quality sleep, even if the sleep is very reduced. I think we've, I think it's important that people have highlighted the importance of sleep and getting enough rest. I do think it's gone too far. We've created this anxiety about sleep that it's good. If we don't sleep enough, we're going to get dementia. You know, there's a lot of evidence to the contrary that one can have a dysregulated sleep schedule and still be a happy person and productive. I mean, much of my life, I've pulled all-nighters and slept weird schedules. You know, I think many people can probably relate to going to sleep, waking up four hours later, being up for an hour or two on your computer, then going back to sleep and getting amazing sleep the next day functioning. Sure, there, it may be that a solid eight hours with no in, uh, interruptions in there or nine or 10 could do great benefit. But so it's not that just getting more sleep allows you to perform better. Consistency of total sleep duration was far more important for performance on these exams than total sleep duration itself. There's a lot of information out there already about the biology of sleep. The longer we are awake, the more adenosine accumulates in our brain. Adenosine creates a sort of sleep drive or a sleep hunger. It creates the feeling of sleepiness, independent of time of day or night. But it, it turns out that if you look at health metrics, people that are strictly nocturnal do far worse on immune function, on metabolic function, et cetera, than people who are diurnal, who are awake during the daytime. It's quite simple on the face of it, and it's quite simple to resolve, but people tend to make a big mess of this whole circadian literature, frankly. If you're pulling an all-nighter, or you're somehow on messed up sleep, that there is going to be a point in that 24-hour cycle where your brain is not trustworthy. The brain is, is hobbling along, and anything you feel or think at that time should not be given too much value. But if you can trick yourself into thinking that's the pleasure point, you afford yourself a huge advantage. It, that's an important parameter is how do you feel during the day? If you're falling asleep during the day and you're sleepy, like you're falling asleep, that's a good sign of insomnia. It means you're not sleeping enough at night. If you're fatigued during the day, but you're not falling asleep, so you're just exhausted, but you're not finding yourself falling asleep in meetings and in conversation, then chances are you're fatiguing your system through something else. So I also respectfully... Uh, or semi-respectfully disagree with the idea that you can't recover lost sleep. What does that mean? I mean, that there's no IRS for sleep. So w what does it mean to be in debt for sleep? I happen to like an eight hour sleep. It feels great, but I haven't slept an entire eight hours without waking up in the middle of the night at some point in, I don't know, forever. I can't, I can't remember. It's probably some point in infancy, but, and I function well during the day. Almost everybody experiences some sort of dip in energy in the late afternoon or what would correlate to their temperature peak. And that's a good time of day to get either a 90, 90 minute or less nap. I think a 20 minute nap is pretty fantastic and they can be very restorative for cognitive and motor function. I mean, remember in sleep, space and time are, are totally uncoupled. And so they, that's an odd state to re-enter the world in if you're not going to stay there for a while, like for a good night's sleep. Non-sleep deep rest is allowing your system to drop into states of a real calm that allow you to get better at falling asleep later. Some people have trouble napping, then learning to relax the body as much as possible, like trying to remove all expression from your face, completely letting your body kind of float. That the period that we call sleep and the period we call wakefulness are tethered to one another. 
What we do in the waking state determines when we fall asleep, how quickly we fall asleep, whether or not we stay asleep, and how we feel when we wake up the next day. But in sleep... to things that are happening within our brain and body. Outside sensory experience, in most cases, can't really impact us. And yet sleep is this tremendously important period of life because it resets our ability to be focused, alert, and emotionally stable in the wakeful period. But the most powerful thing that's governing when you want to be asleep and when you want to be awake is light. And in particular, it's governed by sunlight. I can't emphasize enough how important and how actionable this relationship is between light and when you want to sleep. Most people tend to wake up sometime around when the sun rises. Maybe not right at sunrise, but within an hour or two or maybe three of sunrise. If you want to become an early riser, for instance, and you want to feel more awake during the early part of the day, by getting that light exposure and exercising early in the day, you will, after two or three days, you will naturally start to wake up earlier in the day. And that's because these clock mechanisms have shifted. It's like setting the clock earlier. What sets the clock and keeps it anchored? The main thing is that bright light early in the day. The other thing is sunset. By viewing sunlight at that time of day in the evening or afternoon, depending on what time of year it is and where you are in the world, these melanopsin cells, these neurons in your eyes, signal the, the central circadian clock that it's the end of the day. Viewing light early in the day is key. Viewing light later in the day when the sun is setting or around that time can help protect these mechanisms, your brain and body, against the negative effects of light later in the day. Again. through a window at work, that's fine, but it'll take 50 times longer. So the best thing to do is just to get outside for a few minutes, anywhere from two to 10 minutes, also in the afternoon. Having those two signals arriving to your central clock that your body, your internal world knows when it's morning and knows when it's evening is tremendously powerful. It's a training mechanism by which you self-train your nervous system to go from a state of heightened alertness that you don't want to heightened relaxation that you do want. It, and so it's really teaching you to hit the brake. Every cell and organ in your body needs light information. You can actually use light to wake up earlier. If you turn on the lights before waking up, so around 45 minutes to an hour before waking up, even if your eyelids are closed, provided you're not under the, the covers, that increases your total sleep time and shifts forward the time at which you feel sleepy. It makes you want to go to bed earlier each night. So that's something you could try. You could put your lights on a timer to go on um, early in the day before you wake up. 
You could open your blinds so that sunlight is coming through. You have the capacity for what are called phase advances and phase delays. Most people are not familiar with what it is to sleep really, really well on a consistent basis. You will be amazed at the tremendous number of positive effects that can come from that.